set up. Just the one different variation is foundation. So let me show you how we get our foundation. Fair, when we're in the greenside bunker, same with the fairway bunker. Dig your feet in, find that firm footing underneath. Same balance technique, same ball position. We're not going to change this thing from an eight iron fairway shot to an eight iron shot out of the bunker. The key point is foundation. The biggest fault is the movement of your feet. When you go back, you notice because I don't have a great deal of foundation, my right foot's going to move. The more I take my backswing, the more my right foot wants to move. So once I get back out here, the top part of my body is going away from the shot. When I start coming down on the downswing, because of my foundation's not good, my foot's going to spin, and I'm going to go ahead of the shot. That is why it's crucial we have a good foundation. Get those feet into the ground. Ball position in the same place as what you would play a full shot, same setup, same full swing. Don't be scared of it. Don't try and think you've got to hit down into the ball. You don't have to do that. The steeper your arc is, the more chance you are, have got of hitting it fat. Right here, if I come down real steep and catch it just a little bit fat, the, the sand's going to get between the club face and the ball. Because we don't have a flange like a sand iron, the leading edge is going to go straight into the sand, and the ball might only go three or four feet or just get out of the bunker. So we're just going to play it like a regular eight iron shot off the fairway. Remember, don't ground your club. It's going to be a penalty if you do. Keep the golf club elevated. Take your normal routine, club face to the target. A good little point is to think of is no, not to ground your club, address the ball with the bottom of the golf club on the top of the ball. Now what this will do is, this will give you a little bit more leeway for coming down into the shot. If you start here, you've got all that room, maybe half an inch to get back down onto the ball for any little bit of movement that's going to happen. So address the ball with your club face on top, take your normal swing, no difference in grip pressure, check your alignment, make sure you wiggle your feet in a little bit more. One other thing I'm doing here with my feet is when I dig it in, I'm digging in at an angle. My knees are forcing the inside of my feet to go down. So I'm having an angle like that. You notice how my foot's there? It's not flat, it's a little more in. Same with my left foot, it's in. Now the reason why that is, I'm having like a, a starter's gun, a starter's platform. I'm gonna be able to get back here and there's not gonna be any movement. And when I come down, I can push off something. Whereas if I was flat, when I get back here, you see the movement? It's going to move. So just tilt your feet in when you make your foundation. It's going to be harder for it to move. Same with this one. Tilt your foot in, harder to move that way. Just tilt your feet in. Good little tip right there. So we're going to take our normal address position through our routine. Don't change anything. Same routine. Balance is good. Ball position is good. Now I'm going to address the ball up here, and we're just going to take our normal swing. Now you'll notice one thing. I picked the ball off the surface. No big divot. The reason why that happened is because, remember, I had the golf club addressed to the top of the ball. That gave me that little bit of room for leeway to get down there and pick the ball off the surface. Remember, the steeper you come into the ball, the more chance you have of hitting it fat. So address the ball with the club face at the top, pick it off the surface. It'll improve your bunker play no end by just getting your foundation right, take your normal full swing, and pick the ball. I just want to whet your appetite a little bit here right now with this bunker shot. It's a special bunker shot. I've taken a lot of years to try and perfect this, and it's something that you could try if you want to. Again, I'm just going to give you a little benefit on how to play one of the toughest shots in the game of golf. Every professional golfer cringes when he gets into this situation. You're 75, 80 yards from the flag. You've got nothing but sand or water between you and the flag. What do we do? 
This is what I do, and it's worked for me many, many times. Take a seven iron out of your bag, maybe an eight iron or even a six iron, seven iron out. out. Open your club face way open, very extreme. Widen your stance, play the ball off the instep to the toe of your left foot. Now, because your club face is so open, you're going to have to aim so far left of the target, it'll feel awkward, but just trust it. Open that club face up, keep it there. Aim your body way left of the target. Now, right now, I'm aiming about 40, 50 yards left of the target. Again, I'm just going to come in with that club face open as much as that. The ball is going to banana through the air with a big slice and come down near the flag. Here we go. That shot was a little bit more advanced than the basic fundamentals that we've been showing you in this video. But if you want to practice it, go ahead and try it. It might improve your feel for the game and the hand-eye coordination for distance. Good luck to you. Here you are, you're in my office. And the reason why I call this my office is because this is where I spend most of my time. I spend my time practicing my chip shots, my lob shots, my field shots, because I know that I'm not going to hit 18 greens every day I play golf. So I've got to understand why and how to get the ball near the hole. Well, here we are, we're presented with a situation right now which calls for a lob shot, a nice high soft shot that's going to land on the green. We've, we've got maybe between the fringe and the flag 12, 15 feet to work with. We've got about a three or four feet incline to go up. So what the shot calls for is a high soft lob shot. Now, we're going to play it very similar to a bunker shot. We're going to open that club face wide open. We're going to have the same sort of address position, get our rump low to the ground because we need that club face to skim across. We're not going to take a divot. We want the club face to skim the surface. Similar setup to the bunker shot. You don't need to widen your stance to, the, to that degree because you might need a little bit of knee flex and soft motion because I said it's a soft shot. It's a lob shot. So remember the bunker shot. We open that club face wide open. Right, we're going to utilize the flange. You see again, we're going to have this flange working for us. And the wider we get the club face open, the higher and softer we can hit the shot. So the only difference with this, with the bunker shot and the lob shot is we're going to meet the ball at the same time. We're not going to hit the sand and the sand's going to hit the ball. If we do that here, we're going to just skim it right across the green. We're going to have the leading edge of the club face go underneath the golf ball at the same time the flange meets the ground. And what'll happen then is, just a little demonstration without hitting, the club face is going to skim across the top, no divot. We're using the flange. So our dress position is, ball up in our stance a little bit, off our left heel, hands low, open that club face up. Remember, don't take your grip and then try and open your club face. Open your club face, then take your grip. Club face is in the right position. Take your grip. Now, we want to have our hands in such a position where they're almost back in the middle of our stance. So in other words, normal address position, you're here. For the high lob shot, we want our hands back here a little bit. The reason, we want that flange and the leading edge to get under the ball as quickly as we can with the greatest amount of loft on the club. So the more you, you can experiment with this without even hitting the ball, the more you move your hand back, the more you can open up your club face. So we don't want it back too far, which is going to feel uncomfortable. We don't want it too far forward, which is going to make the club face aim straight right. We want to bring it back so we can level out that club face and get the flange underneath the ball. Just a little demonstration. You don't need to take a full swing. Just a nice firm swing. Again, accelerate up the ball. Don't decelerate. And here we go. And you'll notice when the ball hits the ground, it's coming down so soft, it may move only about two or three feet. This time, I might play a little different shot. I'm going to try and land the ball a little bit closer to the fringe of the green and get the ball rolling. All I'll do now is just take a little loft off my club. Narrow my stance just a little bit, but all I'm doing now is just using the regular loft on my sand wedge. You notice I haven't got, before I was like this, now I'm just gonna do a normal sand wedge shot. Stance is a little narrower, just like a chip shot, and I'm gonna land it just on the fringe of the green. But you see, there are two variations to play the lob shot. Now, I want to show you a little practice tip we can do. It's something I've always done, and I do it many, many times, and I've even shown a few golf professionals. What we do, we pick up a golf ball, 
we throw away the golf club. We don't need it for this shot. Take our normal address position. Just have an imaginary golf club in your hand. Take our normal address position, just like we're going to play the lob shot. Now, put the ball in the palm of your right hand and cup it like this. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to have hand-eye coordination and pick out a spot where we want the ball to land, which is very crucial for this shot. So, we've got our ball in the palm of our hand. We've addressed it just with the imaginary golf club. Take our left hand and put it behind our back. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to pick out our spot on the green. Now, remember, this is a lob shot. We want the ball to come up high, land soft. So, the principle with the golf club is the right hand comes through, brings the golf club up, straight down the line. That's how we play the shot. So, all we're going to do now is practice hand-eye coordination, stand here, pick out our spot, and just lob it. And when you lob it, oh, you nearly make it. But you see, there are two variations to play the lob shot. You practice them, believe in yourself, and again, be aggressive. Don't be scared of the shot. For an amateur out there, you may not be too confident with the lob shot. Why don't we think about putting it? Very little grass on the bank of the green here, very little green to work with. So if we can get the ball rolling as soon as possible, why not use the putter? OK, now when you use the putter, you've got to take into consideration you're going on the upslope the grass is going to be a little slower to putt on than the green itself, so we've got to sort of make up for that somewhere. So we just, just imagine the hole is 15 feet past where the hole is cut now. Put that in your mind. So that'll give you enough power in the hit to get the ball up the slope, rolling at the hole. So with the putt, all we do is take our normal putting position. We've talked about that before. Line up your shot. It's a fairly straightforward putt up the hill, and then it's going to go straight down to the hole. So just imagine that hole is 15 feet past the hole and just go ahead and hit it. Break, 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 break. Okay, now we got it up and down in two. Here we have a chip and run shot. We missed the green to the left. Maybe we've got, what have we got here, 60 feet of green to work with. And we've missed the green by four or five. And in between that four or five feet, we've got a little bit of hairy fringe, you know, where the ball won't run through it if we putt it. So what we've got to do is chip and run the shot. We do, all we need to do is just get the ball over this fringe, under the green, and roll it like a putt. So really, all this shot is, an, is an extension of a putt. The loft of the club, I've chosen a six iron for this shot because it's just enough elevation to get it over the, the fringe and roll the distance I need to get it to the hole. So all you're doing is putting loft on a putter and that's all it is. You can actually grip it the same way as you putt. A lot of people do that. It may feel very comfortable for you. You may want to take the same stance as you putt. There's nothing wrong with doing that. So if it's an extension of the putt, go ahead and do it. It might be a lot easier for your mind to accept it that way. I, myself, I take my normal grip, like I would do with a driver or a full six iron or, or any full shot. Take my normal grip, and I stand basically the same way as I putt. I play the ball off the front of my feet, my left foot, sorry, and my hand, just like the putt, my back of my left hand is going to go towards the hole. If it breaks down at all like this, we're going to thin it. If you hit it, if it breaks down the other way, you're going to hit the shot fat. So again, I'm going to keep saying it, it's an extension of the putt. Get the ball on the green and roll it as soon as you can. So we'll just take a few little chip shots here. Watch the back of my left hand, it'll go straight towards the hole. And you notice the club head didn't take a divot. It was like a putt. It skimmed across the top of the ground. I'll do it again for you. Ball position, straight off like you would putt, somewhere off the instep of your left foot. You summarize, you pick out the spot where you want the ball to land. And from there, take the back of the left hand towards the hole. 